Hi everyone, I'm Rachel with Limble's product team. Today, we're going to be talking about custom dashboards in Limble. One of Limble's most flexible and innovative features is the custom dashboard. It allows you to organize all the information Limble collects to see relevant, drilled down data based on the needs of your organization. Custom dashboards allow you to create a common picture to monitor real-time reporting on the status of all of your operations, report time, parts, and money spent by asset to understand where resources are being drained most, look at maintenance KPIs critical to your organization, and share reports instantly via Excel, PDF, or within Limble. This video will walk you through how to get good data for your dashboards using best practices, how to set up a dashboard, how to share dashboards with other Limble users, and how to export data from your dashboards. Depending on your permissions and plan with Limble, some of your screens may be different than mine. If you have any questions, reach out to our support team or talk to your CSM. Let's get started. Your dashboards are only as good as the quality of your data, which is why data integrity is critical. Let's talk about some best practices to make sure your data is top-notch. When it comes to users, the 75% rule will ensure that you're getting an accurate view of the time your technicians are spending on tasks. Each full-time maintenance tradesperson should be logging at least 75% of their working time in Limble. That means in an eight-hour day, at least six hours should be logged in Limble. When you track your time in Limble, your team will be able to see which pieces of equipment are the biggest drain on resources. Next, prioritize data governance. Data governance is how you collect and use your data. For example, let's say I create a custom tag called plumbing. I use the tag to define when the work is plumbing related, while another manager is using the tag to classify plumbing failures. While these are similar, they aren't the same. When I create a widget on my dashboard to look at tasks with the plumbing tag, I may not get an accurate depiction of the insights I want because the tag is being used for too many different purposes. By establishing data governance and sharing how tags should be used with your other maintenance colleagues, you'll have good quality data that will give you the insights you're looking for. And finally, consider permissions. Permissions play a huge role in the data each user can and cannot see in Limble. If you choose to share dashboards with other users, keep in mind which features or data may be inaccessible to them. For example, if you're a manager creating custom dashboards, a technician looking at the same dashboard may have different data due to their permissions. Now that you know how to get good data, let's set up a dashboard. We'll start by creating a dashboard to look at asset and user performance. Navigate to the custom dashboard page by clicking on the icon from the navigation menu. Click Add Dashboard. Name your dashboard. I'll call this Asset and User Performance Reporting. Next, create a widget. For this first widget, I want to see how much time users spent on tasks in the last two weeks to make sure we're following the 75% rule. Click Add Widget. From the new window, you'll see a list of choices. This is the first filter Limbo will use for the widget data. You can choose from tasks, users, assets, parts, and POs. For this first widget, I'll select Users. More options will appear. These will vary based on the widget type you select. I want to see the time logged within the last two weeks. So on the Within the Time Period header, I'll click on the blue text and scroll down to select Last X Days and enter 14 in the field so the widget filters to only show data from the previous two weeks. It's important to note that time, unless you choose a specific date range, will continue to update. For example, right now, this widget is showing us August 8th to the 22nd. Tomorrow, the widget would begin to show data from August 9th to the 23rd, since that would now be considered the last 14 days. This allows you to see important statistics about your team's work without having to recreate widgets over and over again. Next, I can choose how to view my widget. For this example, I'll choose a bar graph. Then I'll choose what information I want to show. I'll select total time spent and split it up by day. Under extra options, I'll then choose to split graphs by user and set a graph target of six. Since my team operates on an eight hour day, six is the daily target amount of hours my users need to log to meet the 75% threshold. I'll make sure I have all users selected. 
I have several other filtering options to choose from, which we can ignore for now. Finally, I need to name my widget. I'll call this time logged last 14 days, goal six hours daily. Using clear detailed widget names is critical so that you understand what data you're looking at. Then click add. Once my widget appears, I can drag the corner to change its shape and size. The benefit of these widgets is that they're interactive. If I click on this widget, it will pull up all of the user's tasks that I can search, filter, print, or export. Let's set up another widget to look at time spent on tasks in a different way. This widget will share some similar attributes to the last widget we made. So instead of creating it from scratch, I'll duplicate the task widget by clicking the copy icon and confirm my selection in the new window. Then I'll click the pencil icon of the widget copy to make changes. You can use the pencil icon to make changes to any widget at any time. This time, I want to see the time my users logged in the last 30 days. I'll keep users selected and change my time period to look at the last 30 days. This time, I'll choose a pie graph view. Again, I'll choose to display the total time spent on tasks, keep all users selected in the filtered by user section, and ignore the other filtering options. I'll name this time logged, last 30 days, goal 120 hours. Again, keeping in mind what the widget is conveying and my goal. Last, I'm going to set up a widget to look at how my assets are performing. I'll create a new widget by clicking add widget. This time I'll select assets and view them in a list form. For my time frame, I'm going to keep this all time. For the fields I want to see, I'm going to scroll down to maintenance performance and select downtime hours, downtime, plan versus unplanned tasks, and time spent. From costs, I want to look at total operating costs. I'm going to display 20 rows at a time and ignore the other filters for now. I'll name this widget, all assets, maintenance deep dive, then click add. This widget is extremely helpful to get a broad look at which assets are experiencing the most downtime, costing the most in time and resources, and where unplanned work is happening most, so you can determine where more planned maintenance should take place. Another way to use dashboards is to look at what work currently exists and is in progress. I'll create another dashboard repeating the same process and name it to do team tasks. For my first widget, I want to see all open tasks and tasks in progress. I'll click add widget and select tasks as what I want to see. Since I want to see all tasks, I'll select all task types, choose a status of open and in progress and keep all priority types selected. I'll keep the time period all time so we can see any and all tasks that have not yet been completed. I'll do a tile view. For the display options, I want to view the number of tasks, but I won't opt to include upcoming PM schedules since I only want to see tasks that are open or in progress. I'll change the color, but ignore other filters for now. Then I'll name this open and in progress tasks and click add. Now I'm going to create widgets to see tasks that are open and on time, open and overdue, and open and critical. For this data to be useful, Make sure you've defined task configuration status for your tasks. Let's work on open and on time first. I'm going to duplicate my first widget. I'll keep everything the same except for the tile color, which I'll change to green. This time I'll add advanced filters. I'll scroll down and click yes for filter with advanced filters. From the new list of options, I'll enable tasks that are open with a task color of and keep green selected. I'll name this open tasks on time. I'll duplicate this widget and make a few minor adjustments to see overdue tasks. I'm going to change the tile color to orange and change the advanced filter from green to orange. Then I'll name this open tasks overdue. I'll repeat this process one more time by duplicating my widget, changing the tile color to red and changing the advanced filter color to red. I'll name this open tasks critical. You can see that if I add up all three of the open tasks by status configuration, the total equals the amount of tasks in the original widget. This is a great way to break down your task data and understand how well work is being managed. Let's do two more. I want to create a pie chart that breaks down my tasks by type. I'll create a widget to look at tasks. I'll keep all task types selected and all statuses except completed. 
I'll keep all priorities selected and create a date of all time. I want to view this as a pie graph, and for the display information, I'll view the number of tasks. This time, I'll split my info up by task type. Finally, I'll name this Open Tasks by Task Type. Now I can see how many planned versus unplanned tasks are currently in progress. Last, I'll create one more pie chart to look at open tasks by priority. I'll duplicate my last widget and only have to change how the information is split up. This time, I'll select By Priorities. I'll name this Open Tasks by Priority. Now I have a lot of different visual tools to see how my team is performing. Once you set up your dashboards, you can share them with other users. To do this, click on the Share icon. From the new window, select the users you want to share your dashboard with, and then click Select. Remember, permissions may limit the data each user will be able to see on the dashboard. For example, since Cheddar is a technician at the zoo, she will only be able to see data about her tasks at the zoo, and no task data about other users or data about different locations. When you share a dashboard with a user, they will only be able to see the dashboard, but cannot make any changes to the widgets. The widgets will still be interactive, so the user can search, filter, print, and export data, or start a work order, but only the original creator of the dashboard can make changes to its configuration. Shared dashboards will always show who the dashboard was shared by, in case you need to contact them about the dashboard. Dashboards give you the ability to look at data in real time within Limble, but you may also want to export your data to share with stakeholders in your organization. There are a few different options. From the toolbar, you can print a PDF of your dashboard by clicking the print icon. A PDF of your dashboard will automatically begin to download. It will look identical to your dashboard and can be of great use as a visual tool. From within a widget, you can export data to Excel or bulk print task data to a PDF. To export your data to Excel, select the cloud icon. From the new list of options, you can choose to export all data or all visible data. If you filter widget data, selecting the visible data option will only export the data that meet the filter criteria, whereas the all data option will export all of the data in your widget. To bulk print tasks, select the printer icon. You'll be taken to a new window. In the top section, select which information you want to include from each task. In the bottom section, select which tasks you want to include in your bulk print. Then click Select. Your data will begin to download. When your data has been fully compiled, click Print and print as desired. Let's take a quick look at dashboards on mobile. From the mobile homepage, access your dashboards by clicking on the dashboards icon from the lower toolbar. From here, I have the ability to create, duplicate, and edit custom widgets the same way I did on desktop. You cannot print or export data from mobile. While you can't share your dashboard with others from the mobile app, any dashboards that have been shared with you can be accessed on mobile. The widgets are still interactive on mobile, so clicking on them will pull up more data. You can filter and search as you would on the desktop as well. Thanks so much for watching. If you have additional questions, visit our help center, reach out to our support team, or talk to your Limble CSM to learn more.